Hey everybody, and welcome back to the second episode of Moto with Ellery. Uh, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at some modeling techniques, and specifically, uh, we're going to be looking at edge weighting. Um, and this seems to be a topic that gets a little bit of confusion, a little bit of uh, problems that gives a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, new users as well as a lot of intermediate users. So um, hopefully, uh, everybody can learn something out of this, and it can be. Uh, something that you can use in your daily modeling work. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just throwing in a, uh, a cube here. So I'm just going to hold the shift key and click on our cube. And there we go. We've got a cube. And you know immediately I'm just going to jump right in and add subdivision surfaces. Now I'm going to start by adding the legacy subdivision surfaces, which is just you know the tab key by itself. Um, so if we have this, uh, you know, we immediately get this kind of slightly roundy box kind of shape you know great um, but if you want to work with something hard surface um, you know this really isn't going to cut it so um, there are a couple of things that you can do you can go ahead and add in some uh, support edges um, so let's go ahead and uh, loop slice here and I'm going to add in a couple of edges going that way a couple going that way and a couple going that way so basically I'm going around the X Y and Z axes adding a pair of edges that are mirrored out um, on each each side symmetrically so you end up with you know this you get a box now that has slightly rounded edges so the the nice thing about this is it's relatively simple and straightforward um, you're always going to get a pretty predictable result and when you go over to render time um, you're going to get something that looks pretty nice okay uh, now the downside of this uh, comes in the editing area so if I wanted to go and take uh, and make something a little bit different out of this box now um, I'd be a little bit hard pressed to do that without either deleting some of those support edges or by being very careful in my selections and um, you can't use the bevel tool directly because if I take you know for example the top of this and I go to bevel it let's say I want to make a smaller uh, part here at the top that wants to lift up you see I you know my polygon edges are crossing and so you kind of end up with a big mess pretty quickly so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna undo all of that stuff and let's go back to just a regular subdivided sphere and I'm also going to hop back over to the model tab and you know so your other option is edge weighting now edge weighting with the uh, legacy uh, subdivision surfaces really doesn't give you a lot of options so basically what you can do here is let's hop over to edges select all those guys and shift W to get my weight tool and as I click and drag this up you'll see that we don't really get anything super usable until we get up to 100%. Now at 100% you actually get something that's moderately useful. And the cool thing about this is if I take a, you know, a corner here, I can take and I can move this up and we start to get kind of a, you know, a curved surface. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but it, but it works, you know. So we get a curve um, attachment between straight edges. All right. Uh, now the problem is though is, you know, like I had just shown you, you really don't have anything that you can do between 0 and 100%. So if I drag this down, uh, let's make sure we're on edges. If I drag this down, you know, there's really not much we can do with much of this until we get all the way back down to 0%. Now, you could go in and add in some extra edges. Um, <clears throat> again, now you could go in and add in some extra edges and whatnot, but really at that point, you're not getting much better than just going in and adding support edges to help and, uh, you know, make a more solid structure for your model. So that, that really isn't going to cut it for what we're looking at here. So that's where we enter, um, Catmull Clark subdivisions. So I'm going to unsubdivide then press shift tab to go into Catmull Clark. And oops, you can see, I actually had some edge weight that I put on my vertices. Let's go ahead and take that off. Um, that's one big difference here is in Catwell Clark, you can add weight to edges, vertices, and polygons. Now, really for, uh, for most uh, modeling purposes, I would recommend for the most part, just doing that on one of them. And usually edges is gonna be uh, your best bet. Uh, you can weight entire polygons, which is gonna weight all of the edges that are attached to it, but sometimes that can be fairly problematic. Um, but now that we've got this here, we've got it subdivided, we're in Catmull Clark. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and let's go back to edges, select all these guys, Shift W, and we'll just click and drag this up to 100%. You can see that under 100%, really nothing happens. And so we get down up, oh, and then when we get under 20%, we start getting something. So what's going on here in the in the kind of the big catch on Catmull Clark subdivisions and edge weighting is that the edge weight is dependent upon the current subdivision level of the object. So you know, if we look over here at our surface settings for that cube, you can see that my Catmull Clark subdivision is set to subdivision level two and render level of two. Um, 
So that means that you basically take this subdivision level and multiply it by 10 to get what will give you a fully creased edge. So in this case, 2 times 10, 20% gives us a fully creased edge. All right, now if I increase that subdivision level, let's go up to level 3, you can see now we're at 20%, but 30% is going to be fully creased. So let's go up to 30%. And there you go, you can see you get that. Uh, let's continue, let's go up to five. Uh, so now I can go up to, you know, maybe 40% and we, uh, we get a mostly kind of nicely rounded edge. Now the big difficulty here is that um, subdivision surfaces can't adaptively spread the subdivision where it's needed. Okay, you know, if we take in, let's actually here, let's go back down to level two for a moment. Oops down to level two and I'll take my render level down to two as well and then let's go ahead here oops deselected on accident let's go ahead and take my subdivision level down to I'm just going to go to about 10 percent so you can actually see the subdivision here um, so basically what's happening here and you know this is just subdivision 101 but um, you know if we're at a subdivision level of two we're basically taking every four-sided polygon we're dividing it in half up vertically and horizontally and then we're taking each of those polygons and dividing those in half vertically and horizontally so if we look at this kind of at the edge you see that there's one polygon that's kind of kind of trying to round the edge for me there's another polygon that's straight and that takes us up to the middle there's another polygon that's straight going past the middle and there's another polygon that's kind of rounding us inward so there's just really not enough polygons it's subdivision level of two on this kind of an object uh, to, to give us a good rounded uh, corner. Really, when you look at it, uh, doing subdivision surfaces on a cube and adding rounded edges to it is actually kind of a, a brutal stress test for subdivision surfaces because you have to add a lot of extra polygons in order to get a subdivision uh, mesh that's dense enough to give us a rounded edge because for every little polygon that you have creating that rounded edge, you have to have a similar amount of polygons covering the entire surface of the object. All right, so that can make it a little bit difficult. But once you get this figured out and you're using it more in kind of a workflow situation, so inside of an actual uh, model and not on the surface of something simple like this cube, um, you know, you can end up getting something that works pretty nicely. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and take my subdivision back down to zero again. And I'm going to press Shift D and I'm going to turn on faceted subdivisions to just go up one level of subdivision here. So now I have um, these edges and um, they are running around the corners and then I have also a set of edges running around the middle of the X, Y, and Z axes. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to select all of the corner edges. So just like the ones I had selected before. Oops, missed one. And then I'm going to press Shift W again. And now if I go up to, hey, let's go ahead and increase our subdivision level. To, uh, let's go to four. So that means a sharp edge is going to be 40%. Let's go ahead and go up to 30%. And here you can see we're starting to get a kind of a fair mix of, of capabilities. This isn't taking up too many polygons, uh, but at the same time, we can actually get a, a fairly rounded edge. Now, if you want to get really tight rounded edges, at that point, you're probably going to need to either go to a really high subdivision level, or you're going to have to have more edges running along the surface of your object. So, you know, if we wanted to take a more real world example, um, you know, not super real world, but, uh, you know, more complex than the cube. Let's go ahead and drop in a cylinder here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add in some details. So let's get like, you know, this polygon ring here, and I'm going to bevel that out. Um, let's go grab maybe this loop here and the, oops, wrong way, <laughs> this loop here, and then the two underneath it. And I'm going to bevel those in something like that, shrink the selection, and I'm going to bevel this out, but then I'm going to kind of taper it down. And here, let's take the bottom, uh, the whole bottom section here, and I'm just going to bevel this maybe inwards a little bit. Uh, and then because uh, N-Gons don't really like subdivision surfaces too much, uh, unless they have kind of a ream of coplanar polygons, I'm just going to bevel that inwards a little bit. And then on the top, let's add just a little bit of detail in here too. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of go in through here. And oops, let's taper that in. We'll go here and we'll go up. And then we'll add that ring of coplanar polys. So if I subdivide this, you know, great, we get our kind of lumpy rounded cylinder thing. But, you know, let's go ahead and take our subdivision level up first. Let's go to level four. 
And now I'm just going to go through here with my edge tools and select those edges. And I'm going to want all of these, but I don't need any of these intermediary ones. Let's get those. I don't need any of these down here until we get down to the very bottom. And I'll press L, Shift W, and we'll just click and add on that 30% weight that I had set before. So now you can see, um, you know, we actually get something that subdivides relatively nicely. If we hop over to the render view so that we can see this, um, you know, you see we get a really nice mix of nice hard surfaces with slightly rounded chamfered edges. Um, you know, if I were to take some areas of this, like, you know, let's say I take uh, you know, this edge right here and I'm going to scale it in. Remember, this one doesn't have any weight to it. So if we scale in, we actually get, um, you know, we get rounding so we can get curvature there. So I've got curves here. I've got solid edges there. Um, you know, overall, this works pretty well. So you can see in, in the instance of using it in more of a modeling workflow, not just playing around on a cube, you can get something more out of this. So also here, what I'd like to do is let's go over it and um, I'm going to look at, you know, say this ring right here. So I'm going to loop select all of that. And now it, as I go on extending the geometry, so using uh, things like bevel tools, um, things like that, um, I'm going to retain the weight of whatever um, edges I'm basing off of. So the outside, the border of this selection has that 30% edge weight on it. So if I bevel this and let's go in a little bit. And then I'm going to bevel again. Let's kind of cut in. Now you can see we're actually still retaining that solid edge, even though I didn't go ahead and add any weights to that. It's going to carry the weight and it will propagate on through um, any bevels I make with the bevel tool. So let's uh, let's go ahead and look at kind of another example. So uh, if any of you guys have followed my YouTube channel, you know, I've got a series up on uh, modeling Legos using uh, subdivision surfaces. And we're in that case, we're using all just um, adding edges to add support to the surface of the model. Now, in this case, let's have a quick look here and see what we could do with a uh, with an edge weighted version. So let's go ahead and get our cube here I'm gonna hide that cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and press shift D. And so I can facet this so that I get, um, you know, something a little bit, um, a little bit nicer. So I have a little more polygons to work with. And let's go ahead and I'm just going to take, and I'm not going to make this exactly like a real Lego. I'm not going to respect any of the dimensions, but, you know, we get, uh, let's say we get a bevel here like this, and then we bevel in and you've got this uh, kind of little inset up here in the top. All right. And then on the top of the model here, we've got a bevel that comes in and here let's actually go to our side view so we can get this kind of close so this would be the piece that would fit into that bottom piece let's go ahead and um, oops shift click and bevel that upwards you know maybe something like that uh, actually these are a little too shallow so let's go ahead and take those and move them up a little bit there we go so you know let's go ahead and do this with sub D's so I'm gonna go down to surface I'm gonna set my subdivision level up to four and I'm gonna press shift tab and uh, let's set our render level up to four as well. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all of these edges here as well as these and these. Oops. These ones at the top, we can't just double click on because we don't get everything with them. Uh, but then I'm also going to need this edge here, this edge here. So any edge that's going to be sharp is what I'm selecting here at first. And oops, now we're back down to the end cap so we have to select them all manually and let's go ahead and um, shift W let's put that 30% weight on okay so it's a good start uh, and now I'm gonna go here to the corners so let's go get these guys these guys these guys and these guys and shift W and okay so couple of issues here <laughs> the the first issue is going to be that uh you know we don't have round uh roundness anywhere so let's go ahead and fix that so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and select these corners here uh shift w and i'm going to set the weight down to zero okay all right now you can see we have a little bit of an issue with the transition here so what i'm going to have to do in this case is i'm just going to go ahead and add in an extra edge right there and then I can grab these edges here. And that's going to be sometimes where you'll get some issues. If you're transitioning on edge weights, um, you will have some areas where, um, where if you're going from a sharp to a, uh, to a smooth edge, 
it doesn't happen very well unless it's on a flat surface. So just something kind of to keep in mind there. Uh, and then let's go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom here. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a loop slice here. And then I'm going to take this guy and this guy, this one and this one. So basically I'm grabbing the corner and then one edge outwards. And I'm going to set the weight down to zero. And oops, looks like we missed one. There we go. Set it down to zero. So we still have one issue though, and that's that um, you know essentially we don't have uh, the geometry described correctly here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take these extra edges here that had been giving us some support, and I'm going to get rid of them. And now you can see that we start to get something that's actually working pretty well. Now the downside here is that we don't have enough polygons to really make this uh, work super well because we're um, uh, we, we just don't have enough to round this corner. So what we could do though is um, we could go in here and I'm going to select um, all of and here. Let's start with these uh, kind of horizontal edges that wrap around it radially. Let's grab all these, those, and that one. And let's go ahead and set my subdivision level. Let's go all the way to six because since we don't have um, a lot of extra stuff going on here, we can actually get some uh, some higher subdivision levels. So now we'll take this and we'll subdivide the weight up to 50%. All right, you can see that's working pretty well. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to get the corners. And with that, we got to include these ones here, kind of the overlap uh, corner. And then we'll get here and here and here. And we just get all of these corners and then we'll add the weight um, that 50% weight on here as well. So shift W, click, and there we go. So now we've got something that's working pretty well as far as nice transitions between smooth and solid uh, right here across the surface of this object. Once again, we'll hop over to the render view here so that we can get a nice look at this. And you can see we've got a pretty nice rounded uh, rounded top. Now what we could do and what would make this even better would be to add back in those intermediary subdivisions um, across the middles of the polygons and then kind of hint at the rounded shape in the low poly version before it's subdivided. And that's going to give us a much nice, uh, more, more circular rounding there, uh, both here and down here on the bottom. Uh, but I'm not going to take the time to do that at the moment. Uh, you get the idea. Um, and that will also kind of help to add a little bit of extra rigidity to these edges here because it will be adding an extra um, set of polygons. It will essentially double the amount of polygons that this edge has. And so it will tighten up and further crease that corner. So, you know, the nice thing about working with uh, these kind of edge weighting is that it really allows you to uh, to increase your speed of your workflow when you're um, working with, you know, ideation and uh, concept design or things like that, where you want to have uh, kind of a mix between smooth and hard surfaces. Uh, this is a really great way to work uh, because, you know, at any given point here, I could always you know, say I want to take this edge here and I want it to be in a slightly different position. And because of the edge weighting, everything is going to uh, is going to update properly. I'll still have uh, sharp creases where I've added creases. I'll still have smoothness where I have uh, not added any weights. And then we can work on from there. So uh, just to give you a, a kind of fun example, um, and let's see here, if uh, if we look here at this model, so uh, let's go back over to the layout tab. So, um, you know, in honor of the fact that uh, this is Back to the Future uh, week, this is the week that uh, Doc and Marty came to the future, um, I've got my ugly little DeLorean here and this is just straight subdivision surfaces and you can see it's uh, it's, it's pretty pretty lumpy and wonky uh, but if I go ahead and select all of the edges that uh, that I wanted sharpened and I crease them let's set this to 30 because that's what we need for this one there you go we've got something more of a concept DeLorean granted this is the 10 minute DeLorean or probably not even quite 10 minutes uh, you can spend a little bit more time to detail beyond that um, but taking this as a concept level, uh, this can allow you to do some really interesting things as you're building your own concepts. You know, for models that you're going to build up quickly as a sketch, even throw away, not use, 
but you're just kind of getting ideas going. This can really help you to mix up those hard and soft edges and just add another level to your concept design and also in your finished model design when you're working on hard surface modeling and subdivision surfaces. So that does it for this one. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you like it, please remember to like and subscribe. Um, if you'd like to further support, go and check out my Patreon account, which is linked in the video description. Uh, like and share that on Facebook and Twitter too. Uh, any little help is greatly appreciated. Uh, until next time, that does it for Moto with Ellery. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.